Hello everyone, welcome, I'm Robert, and before we get to the list, I want to talk briefly about video games. Like many of you, I love video games, but after many years of being into the board gaming hobby, and now that it has eclipsed my time spent with video games, I noticed some interesting advantages that board games have compared to video games. So as a bit of a thought exercise in good fun, I'll list my main three. First and foremost for me is the ability to preserve games. This has become increasingly difficult thanks to always online DRM systems and a lack of physical releases. Publishers eventually just decide to shut down servers that games depend upon to be playable, even for single-player games, and you never get to play them again. Want to play an old, out-of-print board game? At least you can find an used copy on eBay in most cases. Second, the constant broken at launch titles and 200 plus gigabyte updates for games to even be playable. Don't have a fiber optic connection? Well, you're shit out of luck, and you'll have to wait for hours before you can blow off some steam. Third, now this one is a bit more cynical, but hear me out, okay? Have you ever asked yourself, what if the lights went out? For example, what if a strong enough solar flare hit us and we lose internet and or electricity for months? Do you finally go out and touch grass or read a book? Pfft, no. You gotta get your gameplay fixed, brother. You're gonna wanna scratch that video game itch and keep yourself entertained. But how will you? If you depend on powering on your console or PC, or even if you could do that, your favorite game might be internet connection dependent. Truly, an existential crisis worthy of a Twilight Zone or Black Mirror episode. I don't need to explain why the solo board game Master Race would reign supreme in this scenario. Don't get me wrong. I still love and play video games, and I acknowledge they provide unique experiences simply not possible in board game form. They have huge advantages like handling rules and setup for you, processing things in the background, etc. To that end, I've created a list of video games to board game adaptations that celebrates and offers the best of both worlds. Thank you for coming to my tech talk, and now let's get to the list. Alright, first I want to start with some honorable mentions, and the first two that you see here are not uh, based on actual existing video game IPs, uh, but I'll explain why I bring this up. Let's start with uh, Imperial Assault. So I've talked about this game uh, at length in many of my lists before and videos. Uh, it's within my top 20 solo board games of all time. It's basically a campaign-based dungeon crawler, and you control uh, two to four characters. And yeah, you do depend on an app, since we're talking about the whole uh, electricity thing. Uh, you do depend on an app uh, to play this, but there is a fantastic uh, fan-made, car-driven solo system that will allow you to play the uh, campaigns for this game solo. And I honestly prefer it over the app. Uh, I'm, I'm always, I always lean towards analog systems. Now, the reason why I, um, I bring this up in a video game-themed uh, list is because when I played this, uh, the combat uh, really reminded me of XCOM. Now, you're not gonna get the base building element of XCOM, but uh, the ranged uh, uh, combat here, now there are there is melee elements too in, th in this combat, there's melee enemies and you can uh, control characters and attack at melee range. But uh, the way that the grid works here and the tactical aspect of positioning your character and uh, the way that you outfit your characters with weapons it felt like a Star Wars themed XCOM. So if you enjoy those games, which I'm a huge fan of, of the XCOM games, uh, this is basically like Star Wars themed XCOM. And you can play using the app or uh, you can use uh, the fan made RAIV, I think it's called, uh, car driven system. Just a fantastic experience. All right, then we have a bullet, okay? Now, bullet, uh, this is a uh, like a boss battler puzzle game, and it really uh, emulates uh, like those um, those pattern matching uh, games like Bejeweled uh, type situation, like those mobile games like uh, Candy Crush, if you will. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna pick a heroine and go against a boss, and you have to draw these tokens from a bag, uh, and you have to try to combo them and position them uh, so that you can uh, deal damage uh, to the boss and whatnot. And yeah, it really does a fantastic job of emulating those uh, uh, tile, not tile, like those pattern matching games. Uh, so yeah, it's not based on an actual IP, but it really borrows from those elements really well, okay? Next, I want to talk about one of the oddest games in my collection, and that's the Tomb Raider collectible card game, okay? 
Uh, now, believe it or not, this game is actually soloable officially from the rulebook. And this game is from like the mid 90s. And, uh, you know, it's a collectible card game that's soloable from back then. That, that's kind of crazy, first of all. And yeah, so this is a competitive dungeon crawler. It's so weird, but it actually is kind of fun. And uh, the booster packs and the uh, starter decks go for uh, just a few dollars these days on eBay. And all you need to play, if you want to check it out, is just to buy like a starter pack uh, for like 10 to $20. Uh, so yeah, it's such a strange game. So basically, uh, you, you pick a character, uh, like your Tomb Raider, right? And it, it has stats, and you use those stats to roll for tests, okay? And you build a dungeon deck, all right? So uh, when you open booster packs for this, there's cards that you can use to build your dungeon and then cards for your Tomb Raider deck. And uh, the, the cards will help you uh, succeed in tests. Uh, there's weapons because uh, you're gonna find uh, you're gonna find bad uh, guys, okay? So there's weapons that will help you with uh, combat tests. Uh, there's uh, weapons that uh, will heal you. Uh, sorry, not weapons. There's items that will heal you. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's uh, there's you know like equipment uh, and there's even like a mechanic here where like you save your game. Like it's it's so it's so bizarre. Like there's actually like when you create your dungeon, you create save points where you respond to. It's such a bizarre game. And the solo works okay. Uh, like I think that it really could benefit from some house ruling. Uh, but yeah, it's basically a dungeon crawler uh, with the Tomb Raider IP uh, in collectible card game form. A very, very uh, bizarre game. But yeah, I mean, uh, it definitely could fits in the theme of this list. Uh, it is a video game based uh, board game that's soloable. Uh, so check it out uh, if you can find a uh, if you can find a uh, starter deck for cheap. Now I want to talk about the Warcraft IP. And it's one of my favorite uh, IPs, especially from the RTS side. I did play World of Warcraft, but I don't have as much of an attachment to that as I do to Warcraft 3, Warcraft 2, Warcraft 1. So I, I really, really like those RTSs, okay? Uh, now, uh, Cloud Spire is a game that uh, I have not played yet. And I'm making a bit of an exception here. I'm cheating a bit. Uh, I do always, uh, include games in my list that I've actually played. But uh, Cloud Spire has such a good reputation that I don't think I'm doing you a disservice by bringing this game up. But from what I've read, uh, this game basically takes a lot of inspiration from games like Warcraft and MOBAs like uh, Defense of the Ancients. And you're going to have a base, you're going to have heroes, you're going to have uh, minor units that you move around a map and you gain resources and use powers. So uh, it has those elements from RTSs and, Mo and MOBAs, okay? Uh, so uh, now I have heard that it is very complex, so do keep that in mind. And it's a chip theory game, so it's a, it'll come at a premium. Uh, but uh, do read into Cloudspire if you want that analog uh, RTS fix, okay? Uh, now, uh, on that same note, before we move to this, I want to talk about um, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, which I did actually play and own at some point, but I let it go. So that is a game that even more so heavily inspires and draws from games like Warcraft 3, okay? And it'll have the heroes, the moving around the map of units, the tiered command centers that you uh, upgrade over the course of the game. Uh, so it's a 4X game that's soloable, and it has a pretty decent solo system. It has many factions, just like in, in Warcraft, okay? Uh, so check that out. Now, I did eventually let it go because I felt that there was a bit of overlap as far as 4X games go between that and Scythe, and I much prefer Scythe. I think it's a bit more polished, okay? And it has a more interesting puzzle. Uh, not the most one-to-one -one comparison, but yeah, that's basically why I let it go. Okay, it's a very big box, but if you want that Warcraft 3 in board game form, uh, either uh, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea and Cloud Spire, you, I think you can't go wrong with those uh, either of those if you want to experience that, okay? Now, we also have, in with the actual Warcraft IP, we have uh, World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, okay? Now, this didn't make it to my main list because this is more of a pandemic game, really. It doesn't really evoke uh, the World of Warcraft gameplay that much, okay? You're, you're not going to have a character and level it up, right? It's basically just a pandemic game in uh, Warcraft uh, skin, right? But... It is pretty decent and it does 
evoke some of the game with like the characters and the heroes and their abilities and how you move around the map and uh, kill ghouls and abominations and you face the Lich King at the end and you're going to find familiar characters from the IP. And it has a gorgeous sculpt. It's pretty easy to learn. Uh, so this game has a lot of things going for it. All right. But yeah, it, it, you know, it's not the most faithful. Like if you're a World of Warcraft fan, this is not going to scratch the edge for that. Now, I do want to very quick bring up that if you want something akin to like a World of Warcraft in like small sessions where you explore a world with one character really quick uh, and go on quests, I've brought up in the past the Runebound series, okay? Uh, so reading to those, uh, they're kind of out of print, unfortunately, uh, but uh, reading to the Runebound series, okay, if you want something like that, I think uh, some people agree that it kind of feels like World of Warcraft. There's an actual World of Warcraft uh, board game, by the way, but, um, you know, it's super out of print and, and it's not officially soluble, I think. But yeah, reading to that if you want something like a World of Warcraft, analog World of Warcraft. But yeah, that's the Warcraft IP. I wanted to bring these games up. And now I also want to talk about another game, and that's um, uh, Kingdom Death Monster, which uh, I finally had the chance to play this year, and I'll make a full review uh, on that or like a commentary on that. Just haven't gotten around to do that. But uh, I want to bring up Kingdom Death Monster because uh, it is also another game that um, scratches that XCOM itch. It has that same gameplay uh, loop. You control four characters, uh, just like in XCOM. I think eventually in XCOM you grow up to six, if I remember correctly, you, you increase to six characters. But yeah, you control four characters throughout a campaign and you have this settlement phase where uh, you gather, uh, you pick up the resources that you gather from the baddies that you uh, beat and you use them for research, for uh, enhancing your characters, equipping them, uh, and crafting items. So it's it's pretty crazy how it um it's pretty crazy how it uh, uh translates that XCOM gameplay loop in board game form. It is very brutal and dark. Okay, uh, which I'll, I'll I'll elaborate on what I think about the game in my review later. But yeah, it is very brutal, very dark, and you have to control four characters. Not a lot of people, especially if you don't have a lot of background in board games, are gonna be equipped mentally to do that initially anyway. Uh, but if you enjoy uh, the board gaming hobby and you have the pedigree and you've controlled uh, multiple characters in complex games, I can recommend um, a Kingdom Death Monster for sure. And it is pretty uh, pricey, by the way. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm not going to get too much into uh, Kingdom Death Monster. Do look that up, okay? If you want that XCOM uh, gameplay loop in board game form, uh, yeah, um, Kingdom Death Monster got you covered. This is Warfighter, and it's not based on a video game IP that I'm aware of anyway, but uh, what this is, it's a card-driven uh, game where you create a single character or a squad of characters and you throw them out on a mission. And it's basically like an action movie simulator, and the closest thing you'll get to something like first-person shooters or Call of Duty or SOCOM. And it has a really cool phase before the mission starts where you outfit your characters. So just like in Call of Duty, you're going to outfit your character with their weapon, their attachments, their gear. It's so cool. And there's also tons and tons, like an obscene amount of expansions for these games. If you want to make it your lifestyle game, you totally can. Now, my only issue with these games is the rule set. It is a bit of a pain to learn. Uh, there is a community-made rulebook that apparently makes things a bit better. And that's another reason this hasn't hit the table uh, for me in a while. Uh, I need, uh, I'm, I dread a bit having to relearn it, but I think I'm going to try that um, fan-made rulebook. But yeah, uh, Warfighter is just a fantastic system. And uh, like I said, I think it's the closest thing you'll get to a first-person shooter in board game form if you really want to scratch that uh, shooter or, you know, outfitting your character itch. And now moving on to the main list. All right, let's start at number 10 with Stardew Valley, the board game. Now, while I'm not big into the farming style board game like this or Animal Crossing, uh, I did actually try the video game version of it, and I think it does a pretty good job of adapting it. And it is a very, very unique game. It's basically almost like a hybrid of um, adventuring and uh, like a procedural adventure and also um, farming. It's a bit of an odd combination. The biggest reason why I keep it in my collection, honestly, is because of how unique it is. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be variable goals uh, that you set up uh, for how you want to, uh, for how you're going to uh, win the game, which keeps things interesting. So there, there's plenty of variety in the box uh, with uh, events, items, um, 
uh, people that you meet in the game uh, and the types of resources you'll find. Uh, but yeah, the way that uh, one of the most impressive uh, attributes of this game is how good it is at keeping things varied with the setup at the beginning. Okay, and yeah, uh, between that and how unique uh, it is, uh, there there really is no other game in my collection like this. Uh, it is very log dependent sometimes uh, in order to uh, for you to accomplish your goals. Playing, uh, controlling more than one character does help mitigate that a bit. Uh, but I found the mental load of controlling more than one character a bit weird in this game. Uh, I didn't really, I wasn't really a fan of that. Uh, but you can play with one character just uh, uh, fine for the most part. Okay, uh, and it looks like this game recently got a reprint. So uh, if you enjoy the IP, uh, well, you probably own this game already. But if you don't, make sure you get it uh, when uh, as soon as you can because it looks like uh, this game when it. Uh, when it goes, uh, you know, when the stock runs out, it goes years without getting reprinted, of, or, or it goes for a while without getting reprinted, and then uh, it goes for astronomical prices uh, online. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, Stardew Valley, the board, board game. Definitely a bit of a unique uh, game uh, in its category, combines various mechanics in a very interesting way that does justice to the IP. Next, we have Gears of War, the board game. And this is basically a dungeon crawler where you control one to four characters. It's scenario based and uh, it is quite brutal. It's one of the first things uh, I always bring up when talking about this game. It is very brutal and it is also very much out of print, sadly. Okay, so you're gonna have to pay a pretty penny for this on eBay if you wanna uh, grab a copy. Okay, uh, but I would be crazy not to bring up this game in a video game themed uh, list, okay? Uh, because it is such a good translation from uh, its source into board game form. It's crazy how they managed to um, evoke the feeling of a third person shooter uh, in, uh, in physical form like this, okay? Uh, so you're going to pick uh, one to four characters. And uh, one thing with this game is that it doesn't do that well controlling one character. OK, so I think it does best with two or more. Uh, and you pick your, your characters, which each of them are pretty distinct. All right. And you pick a scenario and you have at it. OK. And uh, yeah, uh, some of the scenarios are pretty tough. OK. Uh, but uh, yeah, there, there's still pr plenty of variety from uh, the events. There's a very interesting AI system in this game that it's it's pretty reactive and, uh, and it adapts to uh, where you are in the map and whatnot. It, it's, it's a pretty impressive, uh, not just um, uh, tactical game with you, you positioning your character and moving them around and getting them in cover, but also the AI system is so interesting here. The sculpts are great. Uh, and uh, there's like an expansion too, but that goes for like a million, like uh, the absurd amounts of money if you want the expansion on, uh, like it costs as much as the base game basically. Uh, but yeah, so the, there's like more content if, you, if you're willing to pay for it. One issue this game has is uh, with longevity. Once you beat the scenarios, there's not a whole lot uh, of uh, you know motivation for you to play it again. But yeah, this is a classic solo board game that made it to the top uh, list of uh, of people's choice games consistently ever since it uh, first started. And unfortunately, it's uh, it's kept uh, going back in rankings just because of its lack of uh, availability. Uh, but yeah, it is a classic for a reason. It does check a lot of boxes, does a lot of things right. And it has such a cool system with hand management uh, where your hand is your health points, basically. So uh, it does a lot of interesting things very well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Gears of War, the board game. If you're willing to, if you're a fan of the IP and you're willing to pay uh, the price for it, uh, there's a lot of fun waiting to be had with this title. Next, we have Resident Evil 2, the board game. And men, talk about phenomenal board game adaptations. It's crazy how well this captures its original source material. So you can play this as a campaign game, or you can just play each individual scenario. And it's pretty much based on the events of the video game, okay? And uh, you can play up to four characters, and uh, you are basically, it's basically like a survival dungeon crawler. So you're gonna create a map based on the scenario instructions and you're gonna have an objective. The objectives will typically require you to move from one end of the map to the other. And you know, there's this event deck where a lot of bad stuff's gonna happen and uh, it, 
you know, I've repeated scenarios because I've died in this game, like, you know, trying to beat the scenario and no two scenarios play the same, uh, even with the relative uh, small amount of components. It's so crazy how this game tells stories. Uh, it has a very good ability of telling stories and I don't have a lot of horror games in my collection. And this game does pull that off pretty well, like uh, the sense of helplessness. And also the fact that you have to preserve ammo. This is not like a run and gun, like arcadey game. You do have to be smart about when to use ammo. But yeah, if you're a fan of this IP, it really just is a no brainer. And uh, if you want to experience that in board game form, this is just one of the best examples uh, of what is possible in this uh, board game format. Uh, what can be done to bring some of these IPs into board game form to say, a phenomenal game okay and uh since this and this was the first in the series and since uh, then they've already come out with resident evil 3 resident evil 1 uh so i think you can't go wrong uh, so just pick whichever uh, there's some minor differences between them uh, so you know uh, do a bit of research and see which one uh, you prefer uh, but uh resident evil 2 as it happens is was the biggest like most influential like uh, resident evil game that i played it was the first one i played and i've played other since but you know that experience was crazy back in the day when i played resident evil 2 but yeah it's uh, pretty nuts but yeah that's resident evil uh the board game i really think you can't go wrong uh, with this Moving on, we have Dark Souls, the card game. And man, this showed up in my last two lists already. But what can I say? This just scratches a lot of boxes. It does a lot of things right. I really just do like this game. And how could I not bring it up in this list? Uh, so if you're watching uh, this, uh, you know, me talking about this game for the first time, uh, I'll, I'll give you the uh, summary. So this is basically a dungeon crawler in card form. And uh, you control... Uh, one to two characters, and as I've mentioned before, I suggest that you actually control two, doesn't control that great uh, with one character. But yeah, you control two characters, you move around a map, and uh, your character is represented by a deck, and there's an interesting deck construction element. So your character is your deck, and it's also your health. So when you take damage, you discard from your deck. Uh, when you upgrade your deck, you add cards to it, which basically increases your health. And uh, there's this stamina cards that you use to activate your equipment. Uh, so there's this uh, that construction element where you need to add stamina cards of specific colors that best matches your equipment. So very, very interesting and unique in that uh, regard. Plays relatively quick, and it really does justice to the IP. It translates that element of combat with the enemies having certain movement and attack patterns, especially with the bosses. It really does such a good job at translating that. Uh, you can try just the base game, see if you like it. There's expansions, okay, uh, which I, I recommend you get, all right, to, for having a, more classes and, and more variety. Uh, but yeah, just talking about this is making me want to play it. It's, it's just such a unique uh, and, and cool game, all right. Uh, but yeah, uh, make sure that you look into this, especially if you're, if you're a fan of the IP, uh, look into Dark Souls, the card game. All right, next we have Fallout games. Now I'm gonna cheat a bit and put two games in one because uh, I don't want a single video game IP to occupy multiple spaces on the top 10, okay? Uh, now we have these two Fallout games which I've talked uh, about uh, at length. So I have a couple videos, one for each individually if you wanna hear my extended thoughts on either and also a comparison video. So I'm gonna list all three videos in the description if, if you wanna check that out. Uh, but uh, these are two board game adaptations of the Fallout IP, and they offer quite different experiences. On the left here, we have the Wasteland Warfare game, and this is basically a miniature skirmishing game that also happens to offer a campaign element with a settlement phase uh, between missions, okay? Uh, and it is a bit complex for sure. Uh, they're both pretty complex games, uh, but this is this is definitely a bit more complex, okay? Uh, but it has a very, very well-written rulebook and uh, it has a miniature element if you wanna pay miniatures. Uh, it will also require you to buy terrain, you need terrain for the best experience with this game, kind of like Warhammer, okay? But it also scratches that Warhammer edge if you like Warhammer and you like uh, miniature, uh, you know, skirmish games and whatnot. Uh, I did not try the campaign element for this, but it has that. And, you know, if you want that adventuring element, you can go for that, okay? Um, now, on this side, we have the uh, fantasy flight games approach to Fallout, and this is more of an overland adventure game. 
and you pick uh, one character controls very well pretty well with one character so uh, you'll pick your one character you'll pick a scenario and you you'll go on quests okay and uh, if you accomplish the scenario goals you win and you're gonna move around the the land and kill monsters and gain loot level up uh, so it it really um, emulates the RPG elements of Fallout pretty well. And I think this is the more faithful adaptation to Fallout, as I explained in my comparison video. But I personally prefer this game in general. Like, if I had to pick a game to play, I much prefer this, okay? I really, really like how this plays and is more unique because there's not a whole lot of choices when it comes to solo skirmishing games, okay? Uh, so if you want to hear my extended thoughts uh, and more in-depth comparison, uh, I'll list all the videos in the description, okay? But yeah, uh, I would be crazy not to bring up these games in this list, okay? Uh, fantastic games, uh, and yeah, uh, read about them, check out the other videos, and take your pick. Next, we have Civilization and New Dawn. And this is just another game from this list that knocks it out of the park when it comes to adapting its source material. It's just so good at giving you that civilization fix in board game form. Now, keep in mind that this is not soluble out of the box. You have to download an official uh, document that gives you instructions for how to play this solo. Now, there is an expansion called Terra Incognita that will add some really cool elements and really round out the base box, which uh, it's, not, it's not soluble officially, but you can download an unofficial fan-made document that will allow you to solo the expansion. And, is, and it is just so well designed, okay? Now, you're gonna go to hell learning how to solo this because you're gonna have to eff effectively deal with four rule books. You have the core rule book, the solo official rule book for the core, you have the expansion, and then the solo rule book that is unofficial, okay? So you're gonna have to juggle between four rule books if you wanna play this with the expansion included. But man, trust me, it's just worth it. And it's just such a fantastic, fantastic civilization game, okay? And uh, one thing I appreciate about this is that it, it contains the scope because, uh, you know, civilization games on the PC can go on forever. And one issue I have with civilization games, I've never gotten very far in them because the scope becomes so big that uh, I don't know how to admin, uh, admin like the admin becomes so much that I don't know where to go. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that's just, that's a me problem. It's not like a problem with the game. I know people eat that up. But uh, in, in the board game format, it's a bit more contained, which I really, really appreciate, all right? Now, since we're talking about civilization games, I also wanted to bring up to your attention Age of Civilization. It's definitely a bit more abstract uh, it's it's a lowering complexity, which I appreciate. It's shorter, but it's such a sweet game. And uh, even with the aesthetic, it really reminds me of that very first Sid Meier Civilization, like with the game cover. Uh, and if you look at the game components, uh, you'll know what I mean. But yeah, so you'll pick uh, civilizations and see them rise and fall. And uh, you're going to build wonders and you're going to you have like a research tree and everything. Uh, you can do one off uh, games. And there's also scenarios, all right? Uh, so uh, this is one of my favorite solo games, and uh, it really does scratch that civilization edge somewhat. Definitely not as um, you know, not as uh, deep as its bigger counterpart. Okay, uh, but finally, I also want to bring up Ancient Realm. Okay, and this is a wallet-sized uh, uh, civilization-themed game. Okay, and uh, this is one of my favorite wallet games. So you're gonna basically uh, arrange uh, cards and try to uh, puzzle with them uh, so that you have the highest score at the end and you have these resources that you manage in order to uh, build uh, civilizations. And now this is definitely very much abstract, but I think the theme definitely comes through and it does, uh, it, it's crazy how they made this feel like a civilization game with such a component limitation. And it's just a sweet puzzle. I think that if you remove the theme, um, it, it just works great as a puzzle on its own right. But I do think that the civilization theme fits it really well. So there's three options there for you to, uh, you know, scratch that civilization itch in different uh, component sizes and also different complexity levels. So knock yourself out.
Next, we have Bloodborne, the board game, another game that was part of my previous list for best dungeon crawlers. And yes, this is a great solo dungeon crawler, and it doesn't require you to control multiple characters, a great attribute that is rare in a lot of these solo games. It does a fantastic job of translating its source material into board game form, and you'll control one hunter character and you're going to use them to complete three campaign missions. So this is a campaign game, but it's not a huge commitment. Campaigns are designed to just be three missions that you could complete conceivably in an evening. And it's a very uh, satisfying, puzzly game that uh, doesn't use dice, uh, which uh, some people appreciate games that uh, don't use dice. But yeah, uh, so it is very, very puzzly. And if you enjoy games like Mage Knight, uh, this game offers a nice brain burn. And it is pretty variable thanks to how the campaign decks are structured. Uh, so you could repeat a campaign and uh, between that and picking a different hunter, uh, you know, it's not going to feel the same. And there's multiple campaigns included in just the base game. There's tons of expansions for this, but I just recommend you get the base game. There's tons of content in there already. Uh, but yeah, I could play this pretty much whenever. I just love uh, this game and, and it was one of the biggest surprises for, for me uh, this year. Sat on my shelf forever, uh, but I finally uh, got this on the table and man, it was fantastic. Uh, such a nice uh, brain burn with so much variety and gorgeous miniatures uh, and great possibly card play with no dice, which I like dice fine, but you know, it's nice to have a game that doesn't use dice and just does such justice uh, to the IP. And if you love the Bloodborne video game to begin with, you can't go wrong. That's Bloodborne the board game. Moving on, we have Heroes of Might and Magic 3 the board game. Now here with the last three games that I'm gonna talk about is where it gets a bit spicy because I wasn't sure how to rank these games just because I like them so much. Uh, so it was a bit tough figuring out uh, how to rank them, okay? but. I've placed Heroes at number three because I think it's the most flawed and also the most contentious out of the three, okay? Uh, it's a bit polarizing, but personally, I can recommend it. I really, really, really like this game. Now, there's a huge issue with this game and it's that the rulebook just ain't gonna cut it. The rulebook that comes with the game officially, it's terrible. The reason why this is here and it's number three is because of the fan-made rulebook. Uh, so the very passionate community behind Heroes of Madam Magic created a uh, rulebook that really is a saving grace for this game because it's the, the game is fantastic. It's just that rulebook that it comes with is a barrier, unfortunately. But yeah, if you download the unofficial fan-made rulebook, I can 100% recommend this even at base game level. Just like in the video game counterpart, you're going to control a hero and you're going to move it around a randomly generated map and you're going to defeat uh, monsters, gain loot, and there's a deck building element where you improve your deck. So er basically everything about your hero, their stats, the loot, it's all represented in cards. And you're going to level up your character, uh, which uh, increases uh, you know, your, uh, your deck by just gaining more stats and more abilities, more loot. Uh, and there's also the town uh, management uh, element. So you're gonna build uh, and add to your town, which will unlock abilities and stronger units to recruit. And it has this grid-based combat, okay, uh, that is separate from the map. So uh, when you find enemies that, uh, that initiate combat, you then move to this grid uh, where you move units around and you, know, you pause everything that's happening in the map, uh, finish combat, uh, carry out that tactical combat and then come back to the map. And I really like how it goes back and forth between those things, okay? And the combat is uh, relatively simple, okay? Uh, and uh, it, you know, everything's resolved through one combat die, uh, which it can be a bit swingy. I did uh, shoot a 40 minute review of this. If you want to hear my extended thoughts, I did have a lot to say about this. Uh, when And I talk about like the components and, you know, other things outside of the gameplay because I, I did have a lot of things to say about this game. So I'll link that, and I also made, I put a lot of effort into uh, trying to uh, wrestle with the rulebook and, uh, and you know, create a uh, accurate uh, playthrough. Uh, and if you want the most accurate playthrough, I actually recommend you watch the third one by the third playthrough. That, that's the most accurate playthrough I have. Uh, if you eventually get the game, use that, that third playthrough I recorded. So I'm going to put them in the description. I still stand by my opinion when I shot the review. I really like it. 
Just don't expect something as deep as Mage Knight, with which people are inevitably going to compare this to Mage Knight. Uh, you know, I think there's place in a collection for both. Uh, and I would, again, recommend it even at base level. Uh, but make sure that you do your research, watch playthroughs, read about it. But I really, really like it. So that's um, Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game. Moving on at number two, we have Slay the Spire, the board game. And to me, this is the most faithful board game adaptation based on a video game IP that I have experienced. Now, I have not played every uh, board game based on a video game, but yeah, if you know, if you've played this and you know of a more accurate uh, translation to board game form from a video game, please let me know, because uh, I would definitely be interested in checking that out. But yeah, it's crazy how this translates its source material to board game form so beautifully. Now, this is not exactly a budget game. Do keep that in mind, okay? Uh, but you get so much content in this box. You get so many cards. You get four characters that will have tons of unlocks for you to uh, acquire from multiple playthroughs, just like in the video game. You're going to get the same dopamine hits that you get from the video game from unlocking cards and upgrading your deck and acquiring loot and relics. It's just fantastic. There is a bit of upkeep that you're going to have to get used to. It's nothing terrible, but uh, just when you compare with the video game in contrast, where you just press a button and you get to start a new run within seconds, uh, compare that to having to, uh, you know, take your deck apart and reset the map and the tokens and put everything back where it goes. Uh, and only because uh, when you compare it with a video game, it, it, you know, that contrast of how, you know, how easy it is to reset uh, the game in the video game compared to this, that, that's it. It's not terrible. It's just the, the comparison that, that, you know, makes it a bit more obvious. The adjusted values for board game uh, with lower numbers compared to the video game do make uh, every card uh, play feel more meaningful. And it just plays great with just one character. Uh, one big thing with some of these uh, deck builders is that uh, in, in board games is that sometimes you have to control multiple characters, but here you just control one character and there really are no compromises. It just plays beautifully solo. It's just one of the best games this year. Uh, another minor issue with the components, uh, which I explain in uh, my review. So if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna leave a link to my full length review for this. Uh, but yeah, uh, don't let this game go under your radar. If you are already a fan of the video game, uh, you know, you probably already bought it. But if you've been thinking about it, yeah, don't sleep on this. This is just an incredible achievement in this uh, category of board game translations from video game IPs. It's just crazy uh, what uh, these folks accomplished with this. Just such a fantastic game, and just talking about it is making me want to play it. So yeah, that's uh, Slay the Spire, the board game. Finally, at number one, we have Space Empires 4X. And uh, when I talk about this game, I like describing it as a Master of Orion, the board game, even though there's an actual Master of Orion board game, and even though Space Empires is based on an actual video game. Uh, but regardless, if you want to scratch that 4X itch, of which there's, uh, you know, there's slim pickings in the solo board gaming category for uh, properly done 4Xs. Uh, this is the best in its category. You're not gonna find a better 4X game that's soluble. So one of the coolest things about this game is the exploration. So you're gonna set up this huge map and you're gonna have this face down exploration chits that you're gonna place on each hex. And just like in Master of Orion, uh, when you move your explorer scout ships and you find new planets, you're going to discover like rich planets or barren planets, or there's going to be like events that happen when you arrive at certain solar systems. Uh, so this has that same amazing exploration uh, property. Okay. I just really love how uh, as you expand from your original solar system, you're going to flip the tokens and you know you're gonna build your empire and establish new bases. You're gonna bring your uh, you're gonna build your colony ships and send them out, and you're gonna create this uh, you know routes between your uh, solar systems, and you're gonna find interesting uh, you know events when you flip certain exploration tokens. There's gonna be the black holes. Uh, there's gonna be asteroids, warp points. The exploration 
in this game is freaking amazing. And now some people describe it as like Excel, the board game, because you're going to be doing a bit of Excel with how you manage your uh, empire economy. I don't mind, okay? I think it works out fine. And uh, there is uh, a couple ways that you can play solo. Uh, there's this doomsday device where you kind of just have like a set amount of turns for you to make your empire as powerful as possible. And then this uh, super powerful doomsday device will go straight for your base and try to you know annihilate you. So you have to be prepared for when that happens. And then there's a more uh, multiplayer-like solo mode where uh, there's this alien empire that you fight against and it has its own rules, okay? And uh, there's a fan-made app that you can use for managing the alien empire. Uh, but uh, I think that either game works fine, completely analog, either mode, if you want to play it. There's a couple expansions and a third uh, upcoming expansion, waiting, still waiting for that to arrive. Still haven't tried it with expansions. And as, I, as I've mentioned in other videos, I want to open all of them at the same time. OK, I think that'll be quite the experience. But yeah, this is one of the most beautiful solo board gaming experiences I've had. And it also checks other boxes. Uh, it's a great 4X game, soluble 4X game, of which there's not many. Uh, it scratches that Master of Orion itch. It's a great Hex Encounter GMT game, which is a kind of a category of its own. It just does so many things right. Uh, the exploration is amazing. Uh, wow, I mean, it just what can I say uh, about this game that hasn't been said already? It's kind of tough when comparing, especially with uh, Slay the Spire when it comes to video game adaptations, but uh, I'm going to give the edge to this one personally, okay? Uh, so, yeah, uh, but you can't go wrong with the last three titles I mentioned, just uh, beautiful games uh, in general. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, Space Empires 4X. All right, so I hope that you found a title in this list that will scratch that video game itch when the lights go out. And if you have any comments, questions, feedback, go ahead and put them in the comment section. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.